Hello and welcome to The Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is The Valley Business Today, Larray Page County Edition. I am on the screen with Edison Emmons from the Larray Page Chamber of Commerce, fresh out of the Chamber Holiday Festival. How did it go, Edison? Did you have enough punch? We had another great year. No, we did not have enough punch. <laughs> There's uh, never enough punch. punch. Never. <laughs> you ran out of punch and hot cocoa very quickly. <laughs> much quicker than anticipated but okay. it was a really great event we had a great turnout from the community a lot of great vendors a lot of great sponsors and volunteers it's one of our favorite events because it truly is a community event and we love being able to do things for the community I know when you and Gina were on the show with me last month and you were giving me all the details for it, you were both very excited to be able to do this for the seventh year. But I also know from someone who has planned events like that, there's still that little part in the back of your mind that's a little concerned that either nobody's going to show up or some of your vendors aren't going to show or everybody's going to show up. And that's sometimes as bad as nobody showing up. So you had a, a good medium ground there is what I'm hearing. We did. We had a lot of kids, a lot of adults that came out. Only a couple of our vendors didn't make it due to illness or whatever. It actually ended up working out. We overbooked a little bit, but you know, <laughs> what kind of event doesn't? So yeah, no, it was like the perfect middle ground. Shop Small in Page County is still happening. We talked about that a little bit last month. You guys did a nice little twist on Shop Small Saturday and extended it through the 18th of December. Yeah, the Saturday after Thanksgiving is Small Business Saturday, but we wanted to entice people to shop small all month long, get your holiday stuff as much as you can local. And it's still going on. We have until the 18th. If you shop or eat local here in Page County, just send us copies of your receipt with your contact info and you will be entered into a chance to win a $500 shopping spree at various places throughout the county. And that even counts for somebody like me sitting in Middletown. If I want to get on the Virginia gift shop website and buy something from her and have it shipped to me, that still counts. I can still send you that receipt, even yep. though I didn't actually come to Page County. I gave Page County my money. Yeah, we are accepting online receipts. We did that last year and we had a lot of them, but it worked out so well. We decided to do it again because you are still spending your money at local businesses and that's what we're all about. So it's a great holiday gift shopping kickoff. I'm guessing shopping small and small businesses is what your guest is all about as well, because small business is in the name. <laughs> of I where think you'd be correct. <laughs> Joyce Greg is with us. She is the director of the Shenandoah Valley Small Business Development Center. You are all in on small businesses, aren't you, Joyce? I am all in and I'm excited and congratulations to the chamber for recognizing that small business is not just one day a year. I love Small Business Saturday, but I'd really like to hear Small Business 2023. Every day is a small business day. And there are lots of small businesses that don't necessarily show up a lot on a small business Saturday because they're not particularly retail shops. And we have lots of small businesses, every type of service that you can imagine that are either personal or business services. They may not be showing up on a Saturday, but they're going to be there on Monday through Friday when you need them. We've talked yeah. to several of them. Edison, you've had several of them on the show. Coming to mind are some of the real estate agents. LD and B Insurance was on the show with you not too terribly long ago. So all of those people that are providing us a service, start there before you go to some of the big box brand names because you're going to get a lot better personalized service when you are staying local for those kinds of things too, I think. So Joyce, <laughs> tell me a little bit about the Small Business Development Center. For someone who may not be familiar with how you you guys operate and what you are. Give me the 411. There are small business development centers all across the country. So we are not just one center in one location. We are a network of centers. I think the latest count was close to a thousand centers across the country. We are a resource partner. That's the term that's used to the small business administration. I know you've had guests on in the past from the SBA. So we are their partners. And I guess you might call us their local boots on the ground kind of partners. They do a lot of great programs and of course have services available to the small businesses. And we just supplement that at the local level. Every SBDC has, I would say, three primary parts of its mission. The first and what occupies most of our time is one-on-one -on -one consulting with a business owner or a wannabe business owner 
who would like to just talk about whatever is foremost in their minds and keeping them awake at night we might say. That consulting is always confidential. It can be in our office in Harrisonburg. It can be in the chamber boardroom of Page County. Gina and Edison, that team there, is very generous to allow us to serve Page County in downtown Luray. And it can be by Zoom, phone, lots of emails, of course, go back and forth. But it's really a relationship that we want to foster with a business owner or new entrepreneur who would like some some assistance in starting, figuring out, growing, financing, marketing, whatever is on their mind. We talk about a menu from soup to nuts. So we're from startup to exit strategies and everything in between. The second primary thing that we spend a lot of our time on, and it's very much part of the one-on-one -on -one consulting, and that is access to resources, including the Small Business Administration, including our Chambers of Commerce, marketing firms, Janet's, any of the types of resources that are available and meant to serve the small business community that we don't do specifically ourselves. So we're not a Chamber of Commerce. We're not a membership organization. We don't do people's taxes. We don't offer legal advice. That would be not a wise thing for us to do. We want to be an access point for any of the resources that are going to be there to serve the small business owner, manager, entrepreneur. It may be a local program. It might be a state program, the Virginia Tourism Corporation, or the procurement system that some people are familiar with, or it might be a federal program. A big part of our job is to know who these resources are so that we can connect people. And then the third thing, which has really grown, of course, in the last few years, as you can imagine, after the pandemic, is access to training, webinars, resources of that type. They, of course, grew a lot when we all had to be secluded and using Zoom. And so there are a vast number of webinars, both from our office in the Shenandoah Valley, as well as our colleagues all across the state of Virginia. Most of them are going to be free. You can log in. I'll give all that information and find webinars almost every day of a topic that might be of interest to a small business. So that's sort of the nutshell of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I want to go back to your number one thing when you're talking about these one-on-one -on -one consultations. I want to make sure that small business owners or small business owners in training <laughs> understand <laughs> right. that this doesn't have to be a long-term relationship either. It could be a, an in the moment, hey, I just need to figure out X, Y, Z. And they come to you, they get their advice, they work through the problem, they get their solution and they move on. But it could also be, hey, I need help putting together a business plan to get this actual business off the ground. You have a wide range of how long somebody can work with you for different things. Oh, absolutely. And what I like to tell our clients and what our advisors tell clients is they are the agenda setter and they are the driver of this relationship. Like you said, it might be, I simply have a question about whatever. I've gotten questions from everything from, I don't know if I need a business license in the city, county that I live in, to the full-fledged, I need a really good business plan, I'm going to seek a loan for $200,000 or more. It's a wide variety. We might meet them once. We have clients that we have seen off and on, we're not talking about every week, but off and on for years. As they grow and change, they might contact us again. We might not have talked to them for a good number of months, but might then reconnect and say, now I'm facing a new situation. I'd like to talk to somebody about it. So a wide variety that makes every day different and we love our jobs. And that's one of the things that we can all credit the pandemic with <laughs> is nothing <laughs> in business ever stays the same and everything is subject to change. Whether there's a pandemic or not, we are uh, now much better aware of that fact, I think. That's true. Yeah. I would oh, imagine too that you get people that call in because they have a question about topic A 
And then in the process of getting them the solution and working them through how to get that answer for them, they realize that they also have a problem or a question about topic B, C, and D that they didn't know they didn't know. That does happen a lot. We love to hear from them, but we usually know that there's no simple question. And by that, I mean that one question leads to another. The first one might have been simple, but they typically lead to other questions and more conversation, which is fine. Because as you said, a lot of us don't know what we don't know. We have many clients in a wide variety of types of businesses who are almost apologetic that they don't know a lot about business. And my answer to that is if they are a builder or a plumber, you know what? I don't know anything about those. So I'm really glad to have a resource that I can call to do the services I need. And we're just another service that they need. Nobody should be apologetic about not being familiar with something that they didn't actually study at any previous time. The best thing I think about all of the services that you provide, and I used to say is that they are free and Mm -hmm. I have been educated by my SBA guests that they are paid for by our tax dollars. So if you are someone who's thinking of starting a business or you have a business, this is already paid for. You're already paying for these services. So take advantage of the resources and the access that you have through the Shenandoah Valley Small Business Development Center. You're absolutely right, Janet. And and we hesitate also sometimes to use the word free because they are paid for. So maybe no fee to the client is a more accurate description. There is no fee to anyone to call and come and visit and do any kind of consulting with our office. And this gives me an opportunity to thank our collaborators up and down the Shenandoah Valley, but specifically in Page County. Most of our cities and counties that we serve do support the SBDC, the Page County Board of Supervisors supports financially the work of the SBDC. So your local board is supportive as well as the National Small Business Administration. And then our collaborators at the chamber, downtown initiatives, economic development, all of the folks that serve the business communities in the towns and cities and counties are part of our collaborative team of making sure that we're serving you the best way. But I would be really remiss if I did not give a shout out to the Page County government for their financial support of this center. I like our clients to also know and thank their board of supervisor. They should be grateful that their tax dollars are being very well spent. (laughs) We certainly hope so. And we certainly try. Let's take a break. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit too about some of those resources, the training and webinars, and make sure that people understand. You mentioned that there are SBDCs all across the country. So I want to make sure people understand how that works from a geography perspective. Can we do that in the next segment? Absolutely. We're going to do all of that when we come back. We are on the screen today for the Valley Business Today. Lorray Page County Edition Edison Emmons is with us from the Lorray Page Chamber of Commerce. Joining him is Joyce Crest. She is the director of the Shenandoah Valley Small Business Development Center. We're going to come back and talk more with both of them in just a couple of minutes. Hi, I'm Haley Apodaca, a graduating senior at Mountain Vista Governor School. We are partnering with a local environmental nonprofit called Sustainability Matters to help you help yourself while helping the planet. One way you can contribute while you consume is to grow your own produce. Large-scale agriculture is responsible for more than a tenth of our country's carbon emissions. Growing your own fruits and veggies can reduce packaging, transportation costs, and your grocery bill. And you can be confident that you know what has and hasn't been sprayed on it. Thank you for listening. This has been an ecologically exciting message from Mountain Vista Governor School and Sustainability Matters. Together, we can keep the river clean and the valley green. Welcome back to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is the Valley Business Today, Lorray Page County Edition. We are on the screen with Edison Emmons from the Lorray Page Chamber of Commerce. Joining him is Joyce Kresch. She is the director of the Shenandoah Valley Small Business Development Center. We talked a little bit in the first segment, Joyce, about all of the different services and programs that you offer consulting being the biggest one, I would guess. But for me, I think 
when you were listing out the one, twos, and threes, you talk about the resources. The thing that I appreciate about small business development centers is I don't have to find them. I don't have to know if they're above board. I don't have to know if they're reliable. I can reach out to you and say, hey, look, I'm looking for an accountant. I'm looking for somebody to help me with whatever, marketing, any of those things. You vetted them. You have checked out these resources. So it just makes it easier for me to be able to come to you and say, I need help with this. And oh, here is a list of people that we have worked with in the past. Talk to me a little bit about what you need and I will help pair you directly with that person. That's exactly right, because we do know the needs of the small businesses that come to us. These are very common questions, very typical. And so most SBDCs will have a list of some kind of folks that they know in the community. And most of them, if not all, are going to be small businesses themselves. We want to stay in our community if at all possible. We want to give you local resources. The typical approach would be to give the client three to four names. We will do exactly what you said, which is tell me a little bit more. And hopefully by that time, we already know a little bit more about what the needs are. And we might suggest that these three or four are going to fit that bill. But these are relationships just like any other. And we want our businesses and our clients to interview them, to talk to them, to vet them themselves. I will always say, whether it's a marketing professional, an accountant, an attorney, an insurance agent, a broker, any of these types of services, you are hiring them much like you would an employee. They're not an employee, of course, but you have a relationship that you want to build with this individual and with this business. And so it's important to have those conversations. It's not who I would work best with. It's who you will work best with. Sometimes that's based on the services. Sometimes it's based on the size of the firm. Sometimes it's just based on hitting it off and (laughs) feeling they're hearing what I'm saying and I'm understanding what they're saying. That's how we can help with those types of referrals and resources, access to resources. And then some, of course, are the agencies, whether they be, like I said, local, state or federal, governmental or community-based agencies that are less personal, but just as important for the relationship. And then you have staff there at the Small Business Development Center that has a wide range of experiences in a wide range of business settings that are great to be able to call and get a question answered or bounce an idea off of. We do. We are really, I feel very fortunate. We have a wonderful team here in the Shenandoah Valley. And so most clients are not necessarily going to talk directly to me. I do see clients and uh, talk to them, but I have lots of other administrative duties, which aren't nearly as much fun, but need to be done. We have six other team members. Each of them brings uh, unique qualifications and experience from business ownership to many years of experience in serving not only the small business community, but knowing and working within the small business community. So Allison is very gifted in marketing. I'll just preface, they're all very gifted and knowledgeable about business planning, about financial projections and the things that are very typical, often some of the first things that businesses know they really need help with. We have Diane who has extensive background and knowledge in food service, restaurants, all types of hospitality, as does Allison as well. Barry is a former commercial banker. So I like to say he has always been on the other side of the desk and now he's on our side of the desk and he's on the client's side. So explaining loan programs, explaining how to put together a financial proposal to a bank and what the banker is going to be looking for, how to analyze some of those financial reports that you get, whether they come from an accountant or come from QuickBooks or in some internal process. My background is in finance and accounting, bookkeeping and that type of thing. Sarah, of course, I would be really remiss. Sarah Levinson is well-rounded in so many different areas of business development, growth potential from startups to existing businesses. And she is what I like to call our point person on the ground in Page County. So she serves many Page County clients right there, meeting with them in their place of business, Uh, in the chamber boardroom, as I said, thanks, Edison. But that doesn't mean that client is assigned to an advisor forever and ever. We are a team. And so it's very common for 
as you said earlier, one question leads to another. And that sometimes means we might start the conversation with me, and then I might say, you know what, we're going to pull Barry into this conversation because we really want to get a little deeper into the financials, or we're going to pull Sarah in because she really knows and understands the businesses and the business culture in Page County and Luray and Stanley and Shenandoah and works very closely with those folks. So we are a team at the Shenandoah Valley SBDC, and you will benefit from everybody's knowledge and experience. When we went to break, we were talking a little bit about where some of your funding comes from. And you had mentioned that the localities that you serve are responsible in some ways for funding the overall organization. I would assume then that typically means that somebody that's in Warren County wouldn't necessarily come to you at the Shenandoah Valley Small Business Development Center. They would go to their small business development center at Laurel Ridge. Is that typically the case or could I, if I liked you and wanted to work with you, is that allowed? Yes, absolutely. We are all part of the Virginia network of small business development centers. We are very collaborative. Just, I guess, two, three weeks ago, we came away from our professional development conference. We love to see each other and work with each other, and absolutely it is allowed. But every center will have a service region that is defined. That doesn't mean we draw lines on the map and say, no, Janet, you can't cross that line. And let's face it, sometimes you may live in one locality and your business might be in another. You might want your business in one locality, but right now your job is taking you across a mountain to another. And so it's much more convenient for you to be meeting on that nine to five side of the mountain as opposed to your home. When it becomes important to recognize that you might be in Warren County is when we get to conversations like, is a business license needed? What are the zoning and permits needed in Warren County? What's the culture and the business atmosphere? Who are your potential competitors? My team does not know Warren County the way the Laurel Ridge, and I'm really glad you mentioned Laurel Ridge because you do have a branch of their community college there in Page County. And so Christine and her team that serve out of the Laurel Ridge Community College, they're going to know that information much more than we are. And that's when we would definitely say, we may have been working with you for a while on your business ideas, but we really need to bring Laurel Ridge in or you need to move to Laurel Ridge's advice because now they know on the spot. And that's one of the benefits to the Small Business Development Centers in, is that they're very locally resourced, locally funded, and locally targeting. The Shenandoah Valley SBDC serves Page County, Rockingham, Augusta, Rockbridge, Bath and Highland. And of course, there are five independent cities in those six counties as well. So that is our service region, but it's not unusual to serve somebody from Shenandoah County because it's just up the road or Albemarle because it's just over the mountain and that kind of thing. So where can people go to get more information? Where would you recommend is the best first place for them to start and learn about the Shenandoah Valley Small Business Development Center? So our website is valley, V-A-L-L-E-Y, S-B-D-C, the acronym for Small Business Development Center, ValleySBDC.org is going to take you to our website. It's going to tell you about the advising, consulting services that I've already described. Under calendar, you'll see workshops, the training events, those kinds of things. There's an About Us that introduces the entire team, as I just mentioned. So if you want to know a little bit more or what someone looks like, that information is there. Resources is going to introduce you to other services that are within the Virginia SBDC network. And I do want to come back maybe if we have time, Janet, and mention those, but they're all listed under resources. And then if you want to branch a little further or you're not particularly in our service region, I would suggest finding out which center absolutely does serve your area. Just go to Virginia SBDC. Virginia is spelled out. 
virginiasbdc.org, and that is our statewide network. It lists all the centers. It has all of those other workshops and things that I mentioned earlier that are put on outside of our office, so to speak, and anybody can register for any of them. It does Thank not matter where you live, work, or play, you can attend any workshop. And of course, if you want to go broader, there's the America's SBDC, <laughs> which covers the rest of the 49 states. Yeah. And that's the cool thing too, I think that is more accessible now since the pandemic is that so much of that stuff is online and their webinars and you can learn from somebody in Alaska, what they're doing with something that might apply to something that you're doing right here in the Shenandoah Valley. Exactly. I do want to circle back as far as how to get started. If you are thinking about starting a business, if you are in that startup stage, and we also say maybe you've already started, but you're realizing you might have missed a few things along the way. You're in that early stage, maybe just a year in or so. We offer a workshop called Start Smart. That's on our calendar. That's a two-hour free, currently by Zoom, and it's going to cover at a fairly high level, and when I say high, I don't mean complicated. We're going to touch on a lot of different topics that as a startup business, you need to be thinking about. We're not going to go real in depth with all of them. That would take much longer than two hours, but you're going to get a little bit of a sense of things you need to be thinking about, decisions you need to be making down the road, and it's a very good entree into our services and where we might meet you, as we say, where you are, wherever you are in your process. If you're an existing business and would just like to initiate a conversation, there are links on the website as well, just how to request an appointment. I think there were a lot of businesses during the pandemic that got started by accident. Somebody was a woodworker <laughs> and they were making things. And the next thing you know, everybody wanted to buy the things. And now they're two years in and they have this business that they don't even know how it happened. And That's they have so exactly many questions right. and they want to make it an actual official business now. Mm -hmm. That Start Smart is a great place to get started. You're exactly right. That happens a lot. It happened more, I think, during those two years, but it happens all the time. And someone is, I'm not sure if I have a hobby or a business. We can talk about that. <laughs> What's the difference? And what's the pros and cons? Because it's a choice. You don't have to be one or the other. You can choose. But if you're going to be a business, let's let's make it a successful business. And if you're going to have a hobby, that's awesome. That's get your bling on and go forth. <laughs> fully support that as well. Thank you both for taking some time to chat with me today. I do appreciate it. It's been a fun, interesting conversation. Thanks for having us. Have me here. I don't know. Edison, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Janet. I will be back tomorrow. It is Community Health Day. So that means Valley Health is going to be on the screen with me. I haven't recorded it yet because as I mentioned, maybe I mentioned, Edison and I record both of these shows on the same day for the two different air dates each month. So we're two weeks ahead of time. As the Valley Business Today is playing today, we're only one week ahead of time. So I haven't recorded Valley Health yet. So meet me back here tomorrow for a community health surprise. How about that? I'll see you here in just a few <laughs> minutes after noon.